Okay, let's talk about the stock market. Uh, we're going to talk about my options trade today as well. We're up about 10% in the options trading account. We traded Facebook calls. I think there were 275 calls. Um, let's go ahead and just look at Facebook real quick. Uh, Facebook went to the freaking moon, right? Blew past this supply zone. I can actually uh, probably get rid of some of these supply zones here uh, because they're invalid now. Blew past the supply zone. You can see I was trading down here, right? I was trading down here at uh, market open. Imagine, just imagine if I had held the calls that I was sitting on earlier, earlier this morning, you know, and you can make, you can make a hundred percent on your money. You can make a thousand percent on your money trading options and you can do it easily if you know the direction of the market, right? Or you know the direction the stock is going to take uh, that particular day. My strategy is scalping, so I'm trying to get in and out of these trades, but I'm thinking about incorporating somewhat of a, uh, more of a day trading strategy where I hold right throughout the day, you know, buy at the open, hold till the close, right? I mean, if I had held till the close or held till now on Facebook, I'd be a thousand air. Uh, but it's okay, right? The, the the market presents opportunities on a daily basis, so there's really no reason to FOMO this kind of thing. Uh, but, I mean, Facebook's at all-time highs, right? I mean, let, let's look at the uh, uh, the daily chart here. My daily chart's a little bit messy, but yeah, I mean, Facebook's at daily, uh, I'm sorry, all-time highs, all-time highs. Uh, very bullish right now. You know, I, I am feeling a little bit of FOMO. I'm, I'm feeling a little bit of FOMO because had I held just one contract, um, I would be, you know, I would be very, very happy. Well, I am very happy. Uh, so let's talk about my, um, my uh, uh, gains today, okay? So we're going to, um, sorry, I didn't have this pulled up we're on my instagram feed uh shout out to mary klein on the instagram feed so we are up about 10 percent, right we're gonna call this 10 percent, 999 percent and uh it's about 145 dollars the account blew past 1500 dollars and is now sitting at 1600 dollars right because yesterday we um had about a 12% gain, gain and ended up at 14.55 and today we're at 1600, right? Uh so we're going to go over my trades, we're going to go over my play and just talk about, you know, uh, I just sort of walk you through what I was thinking. I, one of my entries was actually pretty bad and and we're going to talk about that because it was actually my fourth entry. Uh, we're going to talk about it because we got to learn from our mistakes, and I have to learn from my mistakes as well. Um, I'm considering it all one trade, but I entered four times and exited four times. Uh, but before we get into that, right, I just want to hit some news really, really quickly. As you guys know, we've been talking about this. The what's called value stocks um, are actually up, right? They're gaining. I saw one guy's portfolio in my uh, in a Discord chat. You know, Boeing is up, right? His Boeing's up, his his uh, uh, oil stocks are up, his Bank of America stock is up. So it's really great, especially for the people that have been holding these value stocks, right? When the, when the crash happened in March, a lot of people figured, hey, I'm going to get these value stocks now while they're at a discount. And they've been holding all summer and nothing has really happened, right? They, they've kind of been stagnant. You even have airline stocks that are starting to gain, right? So this is very good. I'm very happy for the people out there that, um, you know, have been holding these stocks. A lot of people, the popular thing to do, right, was to, to go to tech, Tesla, Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, um, you know, all these companies. But it does appear that a lot of money is starting to circulate out of tech, and into value stocks like banks, airlines, oil, uh, stuff like that. It doesn't mean that uh, big tech can't continue to grow. I, I think it probably will, right? We we might have a little bit of, of kind of a 
maybe a consolidation period. I don't know if we're going to have a full-blown pullback, right? Like on Tesla, some people are waiting for Tesla to drop to $700 before they buy. I just, I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, and the only other thing I really want to talk about that's uh, news related is that the Dow um, is pretty much getting rid of a, a, a couple of stocks. One of those stocks is ExxonMobil. ExxonMobil is no longer going to be average in to the Dow, right? Uh, we've got a couple others as well. Well, the, the stocks that are joining the Dow are actually Salesforce, um, a biotech firm called Angen, and Honeywell International, which actually used to be a part of the Dow. But some of the uh, companies that are leaving the Dow are Pfizer, Raytheon Technology, and Exxon Mobil. So Exxon is not alone, uh, but it just goes to show you, you know, Exxon Mobil used to be a giant, right? Like one of the biggest companies in the world, in the entire uh, stock exchange. And, uh, you know, as you can see by this, hopefully this isn't lagging too bad. As you can see by this, uh, um, you know, article, uh, you know, we've also got Apple right in the Dow. I don't think they're joining the Dow now, but you know, the, the things are changing, right? This is my point is that the world is changing. Things are changing. And, uh, you know, we're going to see these kind of shakeups and we're going to see, it's just a new, it's a new market, right? There's all kinds of new people in the market like myself. And it's very, very exciting. You've got new uh, retail investors by probably the millions, right? I think Robinhood added 3 million users since the crash. So it's absolutely insane. Absolutely crazy. Uh, now, that being said, you know, the, the, the stock market crash is how I got into all this and how I, um, you know, I, I just started kind of scratching my chin thinking, oh, stock, stock market, right? I should probably get in now while it's down. And I'm so glad I did. I, I, I am just so blessed to be doing this. I'm very, very happy the way that things are uh, going. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, my play. Once again, just, just sort of recap here. We're up about 10%. Um, it's about $145 gain. We're up to $1,600. Uh, and we traded Facebook, right? This, this is sort of my new favorite. Um, I've been milking Facebook for not all that it's worth, right? If I had held all day long, uh, I could say that, right? I mean, look at this. It went to the moon, guys. My trades are way down here. Uh, but let's just talk about my um, reasoning for getting into these trades. Because again, we played market open, right? And playing market open... Uh, it's very dangerous. You know, it's extremely dangerous, especially if you don't know what you're doing. But we had a um, supply zone, right? This was a zone that Facebook has never been able to get past. And today it finally did, right? But we were in this supply zone and I'm actually going to, uh, I'm going to be removing the supply zones because they're invalid. But at the start of the day, Facebook had opened up in the supply zone. And when a stock opens in a supply zone, that's a very bullish sign, right? It's an extremely bullish sign. But I am going to remove the supply zone because it's on, it's invalid, right? So so we have a clean chart. There, there's no... Uh, I'm going to have to rechart um, my... We have resistance now. I don't know. We probably can't map out a supply zone yet. I'll see what's going on up here. Supply zones are basically a period of consolidation, and I usually like to use like the four-hour chart. If I can find consolidation on like the daily or the four-hour chart, that's, um, you know, the bigger the chart... How should I say this? The... Uh, uh, the bigger the time frame, right? When you map out your supply and demand zones, the more valid they usually are. So we opened in supply. I had charted my pre-market high and pre-market low. Uh, so the fact that Facebook opened in a supply zone was a very bullish sign. Now, my first entry on this oval right here, let me actually get my, uh, let's make this a little bit bigger. Okay. So, uh, let's get the pen real quick. I, I like using using the pen. Uh, uh, yeah, here we go. So this first oval right here is my first entry. Now, 
Yes, we and, and I bought calls, remember? So I'm betting that the stock is going to go up. I, I entered um, uh, 275 calls. We have entry one, entry two, entry three, and entry four. Entry one was decent, but I probably should have waited like one or two more bars. Now, we had a lot of bear volume, right? We had a lot of sellers coming in, but that's kind of typical. Like that, it didn't scare me, right? It didn't scare me. We were in supply. Um, and when you look at the five minute chart, like I'll pull up the five minute chart over here on Weeble. Um, like when you look at the five minute chart, I could tell that it was being rejected, right? Like, like the, or I should say it's, it was being supported because we had a big, long bottoming tail on this, uh, uh, this candle that was developing at the time. Um, and you know, I just, because it opened in the supply zone, um, I was very confident. Now I, when I entered, I thought it would go directly up. It didn't, it kind of pulled back a little bit. It pulled back even a little bit uh, lower than the pre-market low, uh, but nothing. You know, they didn't phase me too much, right? We we had a lot of rejection. The bulls, uh, e even though there there is some uh, you know red volume here, the bulls came back and closed the bar uh, a little bit higher. Then we started going green. Now, remember, I'm already holding a contract. I spent about, you know, $275. Um, let me see here real quick. No, these were like 300, right? Yeah, first contract was like 330. So I got in for 330, then I got in for 320 right here. I, I saw the, uh, the bulls coming in. I just knew this stock had a chance, right? It was just kind of, I wasn't even thinking about it. I just was like, okay, I got in a little bit early, but here's my chance. I'm going to load up on another one. So I bought another contract. First exit was on this green candle, right? Uh, so let's see, we're in here. One, two, three, four, five, right? Four minutes into this thing, um, I'm already taking profit. Then I entered again, right? And in hindsight, I probably should have just loaded up on four contracts down here and, you know, sold a couple bars later. But, uh, you know, that's hindsight trading. So I entered again, right? We had a lot of volume. I, I knew the bulls were in control in this moment, right? I just, I, I knew, I knew they were in control. Uh, we also had the stock holding VWAP, right? Um, not only holding VWAP, but we had the uh, 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 the 20 period moving average, the blue, right? We got the blue line going up, and we also had the 200 period moving average that was definitely acting as support. So we were Gucci, right? We we were good to go. Um, so I got out on the second uh, uh, entry and the third entry right here, right? So I'm up about 130 dollars. This is where I went wrong, okay? Uh, it was on the fourth entry. We're going to talk about that because that was the worst. Now, so number one, that entry was a little early. I probably should have waited just to see what this stock wants to do. Get You know, I, I do like playing market open because sometimes the market just goes to the moon. But other times like this, it pulls back a little bit, right? I usually like to try to give it at least two or three candles, but I got in on the second candle. I've been getting in on like the second candle the last couple of days. Uh, but mind you, I'm also reading level two. I'm reading the level two and, uh, you know, things to me look good on the level two. I'm going to get in. So that was my first entry. This was my first exit right here. This was my second uh, entry right here. This was my third entry. This was my second and third exit. So you can see I'm holding these literally for a minute, right? And I'm making like 50 bucks on each one. Fourth entry was terrible, right? Absolutely terrible. And I FOMO'd it here, right? I FOMO'd it. I saw that it was approaching the pre-market high and I'm thinking, oh, it could just blast through the pre-market high. We had the bull volume kind of, you know, uh, uh, supporting me. So I enter it again. I think this contract I got for $435, right? First of all, 
I have no business spending four hundred and thirty-five dollars. Like with, with my account size around sixteen hundred, you know, four hundred and thirty-five dollars. That's a lot on one trade, right? Because if it goes wrong, it's going to go wrong a lot, and I'm going to have a lot less money that I can trade with. In fact, by the time I took all these trades here, they, you know, uh, I'm considering this all one trade. But by the time I entered one, two, three, um. All I had left was about four hundred dollars because you can see I've got what is that five thirty two up there five eighty two so this was my last four hundred dollars and I got in and as you can see we had a pullback now yes I got a little upset about this right I not upset but I was nervous I was nervous because I'm thinking well what if I'm wrong right and by the time it pulled back. I probably lost like half of my gains, right? It was going to be a $50 day instead of a $130 day. Uh, but I held, right? We even dipped below, uh, I think we dipped below VWAP a little bit. If we go to the one minute chart here, and remember, I'm looking at the one minute and the five minute, like I I'm sort of scrolling in and out of these uh, uh, different time frames. If I can find this area, uh, I don't know if I can find this area. Yeah, here it is right here. So you can see on this pullback, right? I'm I'm thinking, okay, it's gonna it's gonna be supported right here, right? We have VWAP, we have um uh uh the 200 period moving average, the red line, and we have the 20 period moving average, the blue line. I'm thinking, okay, it's gonna be supported right there, right? It's gonna get supported right there. It didn't. It dipped below all three lines. Now, obviously, I'm kind of nervous at this point right but i had strong hands and i held had it dipped below here i would have gotten out i would have had to get have gotten out right and it would have been pro uh, you know the whole day would have been wasted so my entry was terrible this is the main thing my entry was terrible i should have waited for the pullback i, I should have known the pullback was coming we got one two three four five green candles i should have known that it was due for a pullback it pulled back but then you notice this bear volume right it ain't nothing right this, this didn't scare me i was not scared it was pretty much holding pre-market lows and then zoom right stock recovers now it takes a couple of minutes as you can see we sort of bob up and down here kind of trade sideways a little bit but then zoom and at 9:49 I sold my last contract right the the entry 4 right here this is exit 4 on 9:49 and it was it, it was fantastic right it was not perfect but it was fantastic my entry was bad on the on the last one but all in all, right, we had a very, very good day. I, I'm happy with it. Now, we were in the supply zone, and I'm kind of glad, like, I got out where I did, especially for my scalping strategy, because it did kind of, like, go back down, and, you know, it took a while. But eventually, Facebook took off. I mean, j just look at it, right? It keeps, for the, the, the whole day, you could have played any of this, right? Imagine catching this move right here. I mean, these contracts are probably worth $1,000 now. The, the, the 300 contracts that I was buying, they're probably worth like $1,000 right now. Let me see if I can uh, get my arrow back. Hold on. So I'm trying here. Let me just go to the five minute chart real quick. Yeah, like look at this. Can you, you guys see this, right? Imagine. I mean, if I made $100 on that move. How much money would I have made had I held till like here? Right? I mean, I know this is hindsight trading, but just think about it. Or this move right here, imagine catching that. You know, and I, I'm not upset about it, right? I, I'm very, very happy. I'm very grateful, right? Because I, I don't deserve thousands of dollars yet, right? I, I, I'm still putting in the work. I mean, I think ultimately, yes, I do deserve these huge wins and I'm going to get them as long as I'm persistent, as long as I, um, you know, cut my losses, as long as I don't over trade, as long as I follow my trading plan, as long as I'm doing good things with my life and with my money, right? Cause that's the other thing too, is like, we're doing this 
to be better people, right? I'm not doing this to, um, you know, I'm not doing this to make a million dollars, right? Yes, I want to live more comfortably. Yes, I want to live a better life. But, um, you know, ultimately we're doing this so that we can be better people, so that we can do better things for the world. And so I'm very grateful the way today turned out because... It didn't have to turn out this way, but I have been putting in the work. I have been studying. Like I treated this like summer school, right? From from like May, June, July, I I was in summer school and I studied constantly. I was I was at this like sixteen hours a day trying to figure out how to do this. And so you know, things are going good. I'm very excited about this. And, and you know, with every trade, it's boosting my confidence. Um, last couple of days have been good, right? Like I I haven't you know, taken, I mean, on Thursday, I took the kind of, you know, it was like a 10% loss, but we came back on Friday. This is now like, if we, as, as long as nothing bad happens this week, we're going to close this week. The This will be the fourth week in a row that we close green. Uh, this is the third day in a row that I've made, you know, like 150 bucks. So I'm very, very happy, very excited. It's almost like it's almost like I'm more relaxed, you know, I can like relax and sort of enjoy my day a little bit more knowing that I have this to fall back on. Um, because, you know, the way I see it is like, this is my shot. You know, this is my chance to really do something, right? To really be somebody and to, you know, not only help myself, but to help my family and you know, just give back to the world something. So I hope that, um, you know, offers you some inspiration or uh, at least some ideas. I think I am going to be, you know, following Facebook um, more often. The, the premiums just go up so fast. It's such a bullish stock. Um, I think there's a lot of money to be made trading options with Facebook. Um, and, you know, I keep saying this, but we are going to do a long-term investing kind of video as well. Or we'll probably do several of those because that's the other part of my strategy. The 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 day trading is going to be for the income, right? So I have income um, coming in every day if I want, right? I don't have to trade every day, but if I want to trade every day, you know, I can have some daily income. The long-term investing... And maybe like the swing trading and stuff. In fact, I'm even swing trading some of my family's money now. Um, they, you know, they put into the pot a little bit and they want to, they're, they're kind of like, you know, they don't, they, they don't want to get into it themselves and like have to learn and stuff, but they want a little bit of money out there in the stock market and, you know, they're going to let me take a little percentage. So, um, it's pretty cool, but, uh, I'm going to incorporate some swing trading strategies, especially with you know, that money and, um, the dividend investing and stuff like that. It's all part of the bigger picture, right? The bigger picture is personal finance, wealth building, uh, lifestyle, right? All of that stuff. That's the big picture. This day trading stuff, this is just one particular technique I'm going to use to get to where I need to go, to get to where I want to go, to get to where I deserve to be. And that's the way you got to think about it. That's the way you have to look at this. Yeah, I'm new. You may be new, but, uh, you know, if there's one thing I would say is do not be intimidated to learn something new. You know, I kind of, it took me a few weeks to get over this, but I have just as much of a right to be in the marketplace as anybody else. And I have just as much of a right to extract what I can out of the market. And, uh, you know, I'm just, I, I'm going to try to my best to be grateful and humble along the way. And I appreciate everybody's support. So, you know, let me know what you're thinking down below. Give the video a like, where are you putting your money? You know, what stocks, options, uh, uh, crypto, what are you following? What are you putting your money in? Comment down below. I want to hear back from you. And as always, oh, follow me on social media as well. We're all over social media. Uh, I post all my trades onto Instagram. You can look at them, analyze them. And uh, until next time, this is CMC Broadcasting. God bless.